Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today, I don't necessarily have a tutorial to give you, but I am going to be talking about something that will allow you to learn some very invaluable lessons as you move forward as a Flash developer. And what I'm going to do is discuss a number of the problems that I encountered when I was building my Twitter spitter. Um, this thing took me literally two to three hours tops to get working 95% of the way but it literally took me probably maybe another six to ten hours to figure out a whole bunch of the errors that I had to account for, uh, some of the issues I had with loading images from other domains, and especially from a source that doesn't necessarily validate that those images are valid images. So what I'm going to do is just walk you through how this little app works, show you a little bit about how I built it, and really focus on that extra five percent that always takes up sometimes 50% of your time as a Flash developer. And one of the lessons I've learned early on is that when you're giving somebody a quote, you always want to double it or triple it because there are so many unaccounted things uh, with Flash development and probably any sort of programming development out there. Um, getting the job basically done can go pretty quickly, but working out all the little fine details can take some time. So I'm going to start off by just showing you the Twitter spitter. Okay, and this app here exists just so that you can pass in the name of a Twitter user and then you're going to load all of that user's followers profile images and they're just going to animate in a fun way. It's really no big deal. So here I'm going to pass in Snorkel TV, hit load, and an XML file is going to load and then all of the images are going to load and animate in. Now, since I'm using the GreenSock tweening platform, I can record that animation literally and play it backwards and forwards. Um, I can put in any other user. I'll do BGR, the Boy Genius Report. And you'll see now that this app is loading the XML file. And then once it gets all the data, it starts loading all those little images. I'm using GreenSock's Loader Max to load the images. So once I know the URLs of all the images, I literally pass in an array of all the image URLs to Loader Max in one line of code and it automatically streams in all of them right away and I can fire off an on complete callback that then takes care of the animation. What you're seeing here literally took two to three hours and most of that time was spent trying to figure out how to work with Twitter. Uh, I had it pretty much ready to go in no time, but then there was all this painstaking work of, oh, what happens when a user doesn't exist? What happens when an image doesn't have a proper file name? What happens when the user is protected? All these little things you may not think about right off the bat. So in the first part of this segment, I'm going to be talking about just the problems that I had when loading an XML file. So the process is you load the XML file that shows you all the information of all the users. Then you load all the images from the URLs in that XML file and then you display the images. So here I want to show you that tw the Twitter API gives you a lot of information for nothing, okay, and you can get it very easily. Um, if I want to load up all of my followers, say, okay, I'm going to go to uh, this tab right here and I already have my URL in there. Um, and you'll see that it says api.twitter.com slash version one statuses followers. And then right here is where you would put in the username that you're going after. So we'll just use my users. And this link here will load up all of this data. Now in this form, it's highly unreadable to us. So there's two things we can do. I can do a view source, which in Chrome on the Mac is command option U and now you will see how it is formatted as XML. You'll see you have this users uh, node that contains individual users and slide deck is some dude that's following me. Um, and if we scroll down here, we can see all this information. Now this is all publicly available to anybody if your account is not protected. And you'll see in here that we have all this stuff and I wanna show you the profile image, which is hanging out right here. So for this user, here is the URL of the profile image. If I scroll down to the next user, here we have Tom. What's up, Tom? Thank you for following me, by the way. I hope you're watching this video. 
um, and you'll see also that we have his profile image here. So it's just a URL to the profile image. So once I can get this XML in, I can do a lot with this data. But all I want to do is load in these individual images. So using Loader Max, I create an XML loader where I say, hey, this is the XML file I want to load. Go get it for me. And nine out of 10 times, this file is going to come back really clean. Um, I'm going to just put another, let's go right here, I'm sorry. Instead of doing Snorkel TV, just to show you, I could put in, say, Wired Magazine's account, okay? So I want to see who there, who's following them. There we go. Here's all this mess of data. I do a command option U, and you will see now that when I view the source, we see all the XML. Now, for each user, there's like 60 lines of information. So this is a big XML file. Um, it's literally uh, 5,000 lines long. Uh, which means that this is going to translate to about 200k of text that you need to download to get this app running. And that's why I used Loader Max because it will allow me to stream in that XML file and track its progress. Now, the issues that I had were that some things can go wrong. Let's go over here and um, let's go back to this tab. And there's a few errors that you're going to be getting. And some errors that can happen when just trying to load the XML file is that maybe the user doesn't exist, okay? So instead of looking for wired.xml, I'm going to look for uh, snorkel23451, okay? I don't think there's a user out there. And then this is what I get when I request that XML file. Now, it's tricky here because behind the scenes, I'm getting different data than what I'm seeing. My browser is deciding to show me this sort of broken link error page. But if I do a view source, let's just do it the old fashioned way here, you'll see, ah, there's some XML there. And this is the format that Twitter uses to reply to all of your requests to its API. It'll give you some XML that spits back the request that you made and then the error. So it's telling me, oh, that user isn't found. So when I would go to load up my XML, um, I wasn't always getting all of my follower data data for the requested user. And so I had to look into why are these errors happening. Another thing that can happen is that a user may have their account protected. Okay, and instead of, let's go back here, and instead of looking for snorkel12345, I went through some of my followers or somebody else's followers and just looked for somebody who had that little lock icon next to their name to test a protected account. And this dude, Ivan Al La Larkin, I can never remember this. So here we have a protected user, and now the browser is showing me not authorized. And again, if I do a view source on this, or better yet, watch this, if I right click and do an inspect element, you'll see that we can now see sort of behind the scenes how this text is formatted as XML, and it's giving me an error of not authorized. So my Flash app has to be set up in a way that's ready to respond to these errors when they come in. So even though the XML file loads, that means it's, you know, it's successfully loaded, it might not have the information I want. I requested a user's followers. Well, right now I got something back that says there's an error. So just because something loads doesn't mean it's what you were looking for, okay? I'm getting an error response back here. So there we have a not authorized user. Um, another thing that could happen is I could request a user. I could get some XML back from them. It might not ex display any errors, but I had an issue where no images were loaded. And I was like, what the heck's going on? I got the file. It doesn't have errors. It had a user node inside of it. Well, the problem is this. There are some users that don't have any followers. So in my testing, you know, I thought I had my thing pretty much bulletproof. And I was just typing in, you know, random words and names to try to see what would happen. And I typed in Hauser. Why? I don't know. And then here, you'll see that I get a blank page. And I don't have an error, but their users array is, or node, I should say, is empty. They don't have any users. So then there was no images for me to load. And all this stuff can take a long time to track down. So that's what's happening behind the scenes when you make requests to Twitter. And it's up to you as a Flash developer to be expecting those errors and 
responding to them. So I want to show you in my Twitter spitter now, if I try to load in Hauser, okay, and let me tell you, it's hard to find a, somebody who has no followers. It was just pure luck that I was able to actually do that. I'm going to hit load, and now you'll see that my app says, error, requested user has no followers, please try someone more popular. If I try to load up a protected user, my buddy Ivan A. Lacron, load, it says, the user was not found, try again. Oh, that's because it's not spelled right. So that guy doesn't exist. Ah, it works. What I meant to say was Ivan Larkin. I just can't get it right. So now it says the user is protected, no dice. So for any of the errors that I can get when trying to load this XML file, I pretty much have fallbacks in place. So that's the first part of the errors. I have two more sections coming up where we're going to talk about loading in images from other domains and unknown sources and also talking about Twitter's rate limit. So we'll get to that soon.